Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first live cybersecurity awareness forum session. I'm Scott Wright, and I'm here with our panelists, Tyler Sweeney, Felitas Poston III, and Anthony Lease. And in a moment, I'm going to ask them to each do uh, intros, and um, we'll get into the, the meat of this. But uh, for the uh, immediate uh, proceeding, what I'd like to do is first say this is not going to be that formal. <laughs> so, but I do want to cover some things that uh, I think are important for setting people's expectations. Um, I do want people to uh, put things in the interactive chat. They can ask questions. They can respond to other people's comments. Uh, and that will hopefully drive our, our discussion uh, even further. Uh, I did want to uh, let you know that it's going to be recorded. It is being recorded right now, just so you know that. And wanted to uh, spend some time as I've promoted this session, um, because it's a long time seemingly until uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month, Awareness Month starts in October. And uh, I always find that I, I'm very far behind. I always mean to do something special, but um, now is a good time, I think, before the summer holiday kicks in. So just wanted to focus one or two questions, comments in that area, but also want to continue the discussion into other areas uh, that if people have questions about security awareness, we've got a great group of people here with lots of experience and it's an awesome time to just ask any questions you have and put out any ideas or suggestions. So feel free to enter them in the chat. Uh, I'm aiming for this to be about 30 to 40 minutes right now, hopefully very little fluff. Um, but if there's lots of discussion still to happen, I think we could easily turn this into a regular type of event and just reconvene again uh, in a month or so. Uh, but um, Shortly, as I mentioned, I'm going to start a poll uh, to ask people just to participate in, and give us a bit of information about your experiences, your plans, etc., so that we can share that with people uh, as well. So um, each of the panelists here, we've got a question or two that we've thought of ahead of time as well. And uh, But I'd like to start off with questions that people might actually have uh, from the chat because they may be limited in time. So I don't want to take up too much time with, with our uh, panelists uh, commentary. So uh, let's first of all do a, a roundtable introduction. Um, and I'll start with uh, AJ. If you can just sort of tell us uh, what company you're with, your title, where you're located, and uh, what you're passionate about. And then we'll just uh, try and get all the all of us done in a minute or so each. Cool. Thanks for having me. Uh, so yeah, AJ Lease, uh, been in the business now about 10 or so years. Uh, founder, managing director of Syntax Security Solutions. Our mission is simple. We design games that impact your security program in a positive manner and make all of that information accessible to everybody. So for me, my biggest, uh, the, kind of the way that security awareness training should go from uh, my point of view is we need to build better carpenters. We don't need better saws. There's already amazing tooling out there. Let's get people better in this business. Let's make people uh, you know, a little bit more effective day to day and let's make this security environment just available for everybody. So no, no secrets here. Let's have a good time with it while we're at it. Awesome. Thanks a lot, AJ. Also, I just want to welcome Tyler Sweeney. I almost forgot to mention him earlier and he's sitting there waiting, waving his hands in the, in the peanut gallery, but uh, let's go to Tyler and uh, just have him uh, do a quick uh, intro uh, where, where you're located, what you're working on and what you're passionate about. Well, thanks for having me, Scott. It's nice to be on a panel with all you guys. We have a lot of great talent here. I'm really excited to see where this goes. Uh, my name is Tyler Sweeney. I'm a cybersecurity specialist at a managed service provider out of Bakersfield, California. If you haven't heard of it, I wouldn't blame you. It's it's not the part of California you go on vacation to. Um, so I, I work in somewhat of a more of a, a sales role uh, as an account executive and also in some of the back office and deployment stuff for our cybersecurity tools. Um, and I mostly partner with enterprises, you know, try and get them on board with, you know, staying secure. And I think all of us here on the panel know that oftentimes that's a lot harder to get companies to recognize. And, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, what's important to me and one of the things I find really interesting is, um, you know, we, we have these tools for security awareness, but, and me and Scott have talked about this, I think that there's a culture that has to go along with it that we're starting to see in organizations. And I, I really think that has the biggest influence on, you know, the human element. Cool. Thanks a lot, Tyler. Uh, I'm just putting a note here, make sure you uh, enter uh, questions if you have them right now for us to start handling after we get done our introductions, I'd like to uh, turn to that or we'll go to the panel's questions. So, um, 
that finally we'll, we'll ask uh, Felitas Poston III to uh, introduce himself. Thank you. Uh, so I'm coming at this from a slightly different point of view. I am a SOC engineer for a large utility based on the eastern half of the United States. Uh, so where I come after this is helping users realize that they can be the best blue team, blue team member that the organization has. But if you see something, you say something. So I have a deep mindset in helping educate users on the social engineering tactics, mainly around what we talk about from a phishing point of view, most of the time of when you see something, you say something, how to report it and understanding what the benefit of reporting those emails to your SOC and your organization does to help reduce the response time as the Verizon data breach report alluded to several years and continue to the 80 plus percent of attacks have a human element. So I think it's important that we teach our employees and our constituents, clients, if you see something, say something and don't fear the consequences of reporting a click that you performed in your environment. So, awesome. Thank you for being here today. Yeah, thanks a lot for joining us, uh, all of you. And um, I'll just do a quick intro of myself. Uh, if you haven't uh, been on any of my webinars or seen podcasts I've been on, uh, I'm uh, Scott Wright, a cybersecurity awareness coach. Uh, and I'm also CEO of Click Armor, uh, which is the first gamified security awareness training and engagement uh, platform. Um, I've been teaching security awareness about 15 years. Uh, I did something fun 10 years ago or so called the Honey Stick Project, where I would drop USB drives and smartphones around just to see what people would do with them. And that was, you know, a good uh, icebreaker material for my, my training courses. So that's kind of where I got uh, into doing innovative stuff. Uh, I developed Click Armor as a, a new way to engage people for training after hearing a lot of complaints about how boring and uh, sort of useless uh, a lot of e-learning based training was. So happy to chat with anyone who wants to connect after. Uh, send me a note in the chat or you can find me on LinkedIn uh, as well. So let's get started. Um, while we're uh, waiting here for people to answer their questions, love to hear where people are actually coming from. Um, we've got uh, AJ from Western Canada, myself here in Ottawa, Fleetus from North Carolina, Tyler from California. Anybody else want to enter where they're coming in from in the uh, uh, chat? Kohler in England. Awesome. England. Thanks very much. Cool. Idaho. Idaho. Welcome, Robert and Owen. Uh, Terry from University of Virginia. That's awesome. Great coverage. Thanks very much, folks. So uh, I don't see any immediate questions. If you guys see anything pop up, let me know. But um, what we've decided to do is we're, we're each going to uh, have a question that we've kind of thought up in advance that could be useful for people to uh, consider during this session. So um, I'm going to start with AJ. Maybe you can uh, pose your, your question and just uh, each of us in the panel will take a shot at it. But then we'd also like to open it up to anybody while we're speaking. You can just enter a a comment in the chat and then we'll get to that as well. Yeah, uh, I think in, in this case, because Cybersecurity Awareness Month has really taken off, right? We're seeing organizations starting to lean into this. Um, you know, we're, we're certainly not the first people to sit and have this conversation. You know, I'm wondering if organizations by and large are leveraging uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month as part of their security awareness strategy, if one even exists. Yeah, really good question. Uh, Fleetus, do you have a... Sure. Um... Because, as I alluded to, we have determined that our users can be a very blue team asset. Um, for, for those who don't understand, blue team is your defense side of the house, not your offensive side. So that's your SOC, your, your vulnerability, and some of your patching management stuff that your IT teams may do. Is We've actually set up, like many organizations, the four-week challenges. Each week we cover a different topic, usually aligning with one of the local government's um, themes to help understand. So it could be anything from physical security, OSINT, email, social engineering, et cetera, to teach our users, not just how it applies to their professional life, but how they can actually take it home and apply it to their personal life. Especially as we all went through the mindset of COVID and moving to a virtual environment, teaching parents how to secure their kids, school laptops, tablets, et cetera, as well as the separation of duties between your corporate assets and a personal asset. So not use your corporate issued phone or laptop to do personal activities such as running your small business, your, your student's homework, or running your, your, your day trading. Like we don't need to see you trading stocks on your corporate assets. So helping them understand the risk that's associated with using a device for both personal and professional and separating creds between the two. Don't reuse your 
corporate credentials with your personal creds and vice versa. That's awesome. I think that's great to have a, a really integrated strategy when it comes to a security awareness month. Uh, Tyler? Sorry, I had to unmute myself there. Um, so my perspective is, you know, different from you guys in that, you know, as a, a managed service provider, uh, we're dealing with loads of different companies and it's really awesome. And it gives uh, wide insight into, you know, all types of organizations, you know, ranging from, you know, 20 users, 20 computers up to thousands. And it, it seems like the smaller businesses always lag behind and it, in part, it's due to resources sure. um, and, and also, you know, mindset, you know, we're too small of a target, which we all know is not the case. Um, and I've seen these, I guess you would say larger, I guess they're still considered small by a lot of people, but, you know, a couple hundred employees to a thousand mm -hmm. um, really start to take security awareness seriously because they've already poured in this investment. Mm -hmm into their endpoint protection, their firewall, you know, everything but the human element. And then you'd be surprised. I mean, you probably wouldn't, Scott, but how many times I see uh, companies that have spent so much money and they've done a great job, but their security awareness is, I mean, they may have the security awareness month, but sometimes that's just it. Yeah. You know, and, and it, I've, I've seen that implemented in a lot of places. And to me, when I've seen it implemented the best, yes, it serves as sort of the annual, you know, focus reminder, mm -hmm. but it's not the only time they're focusing on it. At least I would hope so. But yeah. I, I do see oftentimes where that's used to supplement for what I would see as a deficient security awareness program where it's like, okay, you know, we had our month of training and yeah. you know, education, gamification, you know, whatever they have. Yes. And then it's so, sort of on the back burner. And that's something I, I mean, I really think needs to, to change. And I think organizations are starting to realize that um, yeah. maybe even just because it's less expensive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, that, I think that's absolutely true. I'll, I'll give you my perspective. I've been in consulting for 15 years uh, in security and about the last 10 years, 15, well, 10 to 15 in security awareness. And I think what you're saying is, is true, Tyler, first of all, the smaller, organizations generally don't have the resources or anyone dedicated to the role. Whereas I've been in organizations that have 20,000 people and they have a full-time person that's just doing security awareness. And so, you know, there's, there's a big range. And then the question is, you know, do they have a strategy, like you said, AJ, um, and is the security awareness month tied to the strategy? And I think it sort of, um, it will evolve as you get larger and larger. I think security awareness month is probably your first opportunity to create a program. And so I, I see it, you know, ideally, if you don't have a security awareness program in place yet, and, and you think you should have one, you can use Cybersecurity Awareness Month as the catalyst or the kickstart to get a program going and start doing something. It, it does need to be engaging and it does need to be fun. You have to plan it. And that's one of the reasons why I put this session together is because every time, uh, you know, I, I was a consultant and... October, oh my God, it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month and I haven't done anything yet. I'll do better next year. And then, so I'd start in September and it really didn't amount to much, but eventually, you know, you realize you've got to start planning and, and you see government organizations launching their themes for Cybersecurity Awareness Month in June or July. So why not us start planning uh, that stuff, right? And so for the smaller organizations, or if you don't have a, a, a security awareness strategy or program in place yet, use Cybersecurity Awareness Month as the sort of the, the, the flag pole or whatever it is, you know, to plant something in time to say, we're going to start it now and we need to start planning. We have to start budgeting, et cetera. Um, and then once you've got things going with uh, your program, what do you do with Security Awareness Month that you're not already doing? Well, then you start to get more innovative, right? You can do more fun things as, as um, I think uh, uh, Tyler probably said, uh, it was, you know, doing something that is could be gamified or things like that. Of course, that's my my passion, and so that's really where I started a year or two ago. I did a uh, a gamified uh, challenge for the city of Ottawa here, where I am, and uh, we basically uh, went to one of the cybersecurity meetup groups 
and said, let's get the word out. You know, we'll start this thing. You can go here, register, and we can take anybody off the streets <laughs> and, and get them registered. We had about 50 people in it, uh, but it was a good way to just generate some um, awareness and, and knowledge. So I think you can, you can start it that way, just getting some uh, engagement from people, but you also can uh, use that month as a way of launching new initiatives, being a little more innovative, and also um, maybe taking the time to measure things and report things, right? It's good. You, you, not everybody wants to hear every month how you're doing on awareness, but maybe the executives, if, if they're proactive, they might. But you could at least take the initiative to report on some security metrics for the organization if it's not too sensitive during the month and set some goals for next year and then start working on those throughout the year. That's why I, I joked with you guys when we were organizing this, we could call this session this month in cybersecurity awareness month without too much of a redundant title. But um, the, the, the idea being, yeah, you could work on security awareness month every month of the year if you had the resources. So why not collaborate ourselves here and, and do something like that? So let's uh, just go back to the, uh, the chat and look at uh, what comments there have been. I know Owens um, made some good comments about being really focused on identity and access management um, and wants to launch extra training in CSAM uh, to drive more uh, enrollment. They're actually using LastPass Enterprise, which is great as a password management tool um, within the organization. Um, so Robert has a, a question as well. Um, saying, what is the current strategy regarding the number of trainings that should take place per year? For instance, should training take place in one giant block of time annually, or should it be smaller steps quarterly? So this is a great question. Thanks, Robert. Um, I think um, I'll start over again with AJ and uh, let you uh, chime in on this one. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's any real, there, there's not like one size fits all strategy for this. Uh, reason being is, you know, Tyler mentioned it, you can have sort of this, this saturation, if you will, of security training before it just sort of becomes kind of more of the same, uh, you know, more of the same discussions, and then people just kind of get, you know, tired of seeing it. So I think the, the really elegant balance here is a, a mix of what the business will allow as in here's how much time we're willing to appropriate to this, because that's the big hurdle you have to come across is what will the business actually let me get away with kind of thing. Um, and then from there, it becomes what are some of the reference materials that I can make available? So we may have a training session where everybody can come and learn something, see something, uh, experiment with something, you know, get interactive. And then throughout the year, there has to be kind of this, you know, I call it like reminder advertising. You know, there, there could be some posters, there could be some infographics, desk reminders, um, and even just little emails here and there from your senior executives. So whatever balance really works well with the business, being aware of the fact that a lot of our day-to-day -day involves a lot of notifications, a lot of distractions. So you have to kind of compete with that. I think there's some, some balance to be struck there. So yeah, in short, there really isn't like a, a hard and fast strategy, um, but in reality, it's, it's whatever the business will ultimately allow. Thanks, uh, AJ. Uh, Fleetus? So something that we've done and continue to do is instead of doing it like what we would call training is we build it into the daily operations of our business. So started several years ago, we pushed it a little bit more. We'll add signature tags for all of our cyber folks. So it's inside this, the, the tag. Uh, we put lock screens in. So every time you lock your screen, we've got an awareness tip that's presented to you every time you lock your screen. And then because we're a utility, we're heavily on safety. So we added a cyber moment to our safety moment. So when you start your meetings, you have your level one safety, you have your DNI, and then you have a cyber moment. And those can be pre can single slides. They could be a one minute um, think before you click, uh, pull the door behind you for tailgating, using your Windows lock key to lock your screen when you get up. Simple tech, just you're embedding into the maturity of your user base, as I alluded to earlier. You get them into, I just do this out of habit. Like I start my meeting with a cyber moment. I lock my PC every time I get up, no matter if I'm at my house in a coffee shop at work, and it just yeah. becomes second nature. So instead of having dedicated training, yes, you could do your phishing sims every month, every quarter, semi-annually for compliance base and metrics and KPIs, but just teaching the user to, to advocate, as I alluded to a little bit ago, make them a champion. Think, stop, assess, yeah. and then move on. So just assessing sometimes is a big improvement for our user instead of just immediately, oh, I'm busy. I'm just going to click this warning. The cert isn't expired. Well, maybe it is. Or yeah. this is an, I'm going to click this link because I want this gift card. Well, maybe it's not a gift card, et cetera. So. 
Yeah, cool. And I just had a question for you about that. Uh, you mentioned the cyber moments. Is that um, like published videos or something on your intranet? How does that work? So our awareness organization will put out similar to the lock screens, a little more verbiage similar to the lock screen that you can use, um, canned topics that are just one liner paragraphs, single slides that can be pulled. You can turn the lock screen into a slide if you wanted to. to oh, I see. Okay. Or just having you, uh, pulling stuff out of your awareness training video. So the annual awareness is pulling those topics out and using those as your touch point. So using the data, the statistics, right. 82% of attacks are human based. Yes. Tell yeah. your users, 82% are human based. No matter if I have millions of dollars of software, yeah. you're still my final defense. You see <laughs> something, say something, you do it. Like yeah. you can get around my controls and it Cool. cool. Uh, Tyler, what do you think? Well, I, uh, I actually really, I think that's uh, interesting, Fletus, the, uh, the way you're just integrating that in a non-obtrusive way. And that kind of gets to, I guess, the goal, you know, going back to the question of, you know, what's the, the proper amount of time and interval for these things. And I think, at least for me, looking at the end result and then working backwards is how, you know, I approach it and my organization approaches it. Um, and it's, you want them to gain these skills and have it be a habit where it's like tying your shoes where you know they're, they're thinking about it but uh you want it i mean and this is where good education and, and keeping the content engaging you know really comes into play is you know having them default to that because like you said i mean we all know the user is the biggest entry into a network or into an organization and social engineering is by far, the, you know, the easiest means of gaining access to credentials or what have you. Um, but uh, in in the, you know, all the clients that we manage their IT and do the, uh, the phishing simulation and security awareness training, uh, we find that, and this, I, I don't want to make this sound like a hard and fast rule, but, you know, we try and do something on a monthly basis. And it, it's really, you got to know the organization. And like, uh, I mean, you obviously can't uh, dedicate too much time to it. Like you said, AJ, I mean, they only, certain organizations only have so much time they want to set forth for that. But I think that, you know, the, the real way to answer that question is as regular as you can, with maintaining engagement and, you know, not detracting too much time from their other, you know, duties, because it needs to be uh, present in their mind, you know, yeah. constantly and uh, in trialing and, uh, you know, testing out Scott's Click Armor platform. Um, I really like the fact that it it's unique content. You're not, it's not the same lessons and, uh, I think, you know, we, we've seen security awareness training where it's like, here's a, you know, spear fishing versus whaling. And I don't think that nomenclature really, I don't, I don't know if that's going to help them, yeah. you know? Uh, and I think, you know, gamification, I think it's, it, it's all about how engaged can we get these, you know, people mm -hmm. and how often, yeah. but I think, I think it's certainly not something where it can be like, only cybersecurity awareness month, which yeah. I see a lot. And, and like you said, Scott, it's a great jumping oh, off point to set that, but you do it, people forget, especially if you try yeah. and cram a bunch of education in at once. Yeah, you know, absolutely. In one ear and out the other. Yeah, for sure. That's great. I love love the feedback you guys or the response you guys gave to that. Um, and from my experience, I, I'm you know recently still doing consulting in a number of organizations where we actually do a cybersecurity awareness strategy uh, for a customer. And this, and I'm thinking of, of a large organization as well that um, we we did this. And and interestingly, we did uh, interviews with uh, quite a few executives in the organization to get their views on what their perception of security awareness was of the program. And they all kind of thought back to the one they did a year ago. And it was like an hour, an hour and a half. Sometimes it took them to complete the training when they were told it was going to be 30 minutes. <laughs> and it was, you know, like, and then they would get an inv invitation out of the blue without any communication from management or anything to say, 
you know, you must take this training. And it's like, is this a fishing, <laughs> fishing attack? Just getting me to do some training. And so we took it from that to actually doing exactly what Owen suggests, you know, breaking it up into small pieces um, and making it more communicating and, and cascading the messaging down through the management levels to show them why it's important. And uh, we actually ended up doing, and I would recommend this highly as a strategy, especially when you want to be efficient. And that is pick what are the high risk areas uh, within your organization. You probably got data that says, you know, what are your closest calls or your biggest incidents you've had and what, what caused them? Was it phishing? Was it uh, social engineering? And usually it is the, one of those two, phishing, social engineering, and sometimes accidental exposures. So you can actually create courses that are very short, maybe 15 minutes uh, at the most, 20 minutes, that focus on the high risk areas that you want to change people's behavior on. And that's really, I think, a good place to start. And you could do those um, in, in small chunks. Even you could do you know, five or 10 minutes on phishing one month, five or 10 minutes on social engineering the next month, et cetera. So it is possible to break these things up. It does take some planning um, and coordination. So you kind of do need to have somebody responsible that can uh, manage that process if you're going to be doing this through a large organization. Um, and uh, I'll just put another little pitch. Thanks very much for the, <laughs> the pitch, Tyler, for, for Click Armor. But one of the things that we actually do now is um, what we call weekly challenges. So aside from doing a whole course, we actually do have uh, the ability to do a three-minute uh, gamified challenge to all employees on uh, either phishing topics or general topics like social engineering or even physical security uh, or things that qualify you for you know a security standard etc so those are the the things i would recommend trying to make sure you address the high risk areas to be able to change behavior and reduce your risk that then there's always going to be if you have any kind of compliance requirements there's going to be the need for, for some kind of mandatory training. And my recommendation there is try and minimize it as much as possible. Um, even if the auditors say you have to do it, I'm a certified information system auditor myself. And I don't mind if someone says, no, we don't do that. We do this because uh, here's what our risk is. And so as long as you can justify it, you have compensating controls, then there's no reason you can't um, you know, bend the standards, compliance questions to, to be appropriate for you. Um, so those are my, my uh, inputs on that. Thanks very much, Owen, for that uh, question. Um, Owen had another question uh, as well about uh, different levels of maturity. So uh, I think that's sort of following on a little bit more with some of the things we talked about with fishing uh, training being done on a quarterly basis and feeding it back. I think that's, that's good to do as well. Um, I'm getting lost in my questions. Question for the panel from Terry. Yeah, um, say Terry is a good one here. I think. Yeah, maybe I'll let you uh, read off the question, AJ. And uh, oh yeah, sure. Uh, so Terry's not currently in the awareness field. Um, that's okay. There's tons of opportunities coming, I'm sure. Um, but you know, there's a personal blog. How do you get the creative juices flowing for any kind of um, you know, just like creativity. How do you find in topics to discuss? Uh, and, you know, this this whole concept of security to non-technology focused audiences, that's the avenue that we need to take, right? We, we had to get rid of this old mindset of, oh, you know, the user is always doing something stupid. Uh, well, no, frankly, we didn't give them the tools they needed to avoid this in the first place. That's on security, right? So um, the, the conversation of high tech to non-tech, uh, something, yeah, definitely very near and dear to my heart. So I'll tackle this one for just a second. A good way to get your, your kind of creativity flowing, remember that it will come in ebbs and flows. There will be days where you have no creativity. There is none. And there are days where you have tons and an overabundance of it. It's important to capitalize on the days where you have tons and to simply roll with the punches on the days that you don't. Um, so it, that becomes really important to keep in mind. One of the tips I would say is uh, you know, the, the old comedian's trick of there's a notepad beside their bed. And if they wake up in the middle of the night and they can write something down, that absolutely applies to personal blogs. I, I leverage that kind of thought process all the time. So whether that, um, whether that notepad is actually a physical notepad or a, a notepad in your computer, whatever works best for you, that's one way to do it. Uh, another thing that you can think of is um, when you're, you're coming up with ideas for your content, one thing that can really help is if you break it up into smaller sections. So let's say you do a series on uh, social engineering, as an example, or uh, you know, phishing as a, another example. One of the things you can do is all of the steps that go into a successful social engineering attack, 
each one of those steps could be a post because there's a lot of depth in that content. So if you take something massive like social engineering and you cover one section on pretexting and you define what that is, how it works and provide some examples, that's a blog article right there. And then you have these other in pieces of information that you can simply add in. And then all of a sudden it becomes, this is my week long series, two week long series, however long on this topic. Uh, and then you can start to chunk that up, advertise it as you need to, um, and then leverage that not only to create webinars inside of an organization as an awareness training professional, but simply as a way to just connect with your audience. Good points. Uh, Fletus or Tyler, you wanna? Yeah, anything? Uh, I'll add a couple of things real quick. So similar to what AJ is saying is I maintain an internal Yammer page because we're a Microsoft shop where I will reshare common articles that I come across either during a blog post or some of the news feeds that apply to what my users may be dealing with or may find applicable both for their professional and personal. Also similar to AJ, I keep a, a notepad, a virtual a digital notepad that I take excerpts from stuff that I've gleaned that I've read, that I've written over the years, and I will cycle them through my social media. So you'll see me post them on Twitter, you'll see me post them on LinkedIn. And I get a lot of my inspiration from fellow practitioners. So Twitter is where I get most of my inspiration. I find a lot of articles, I find a lot of solid practitioners that I follow and friends with and acquaintances who feed into that, have you thought about this? Are you doing this? So SANS Institution, IC Square, other organizations who are putting out training material, help give you at least nuggets to start with. And it's always the nugget. I always tell people start with something that's buried as we saw in the chat, chunky. Give them something that's digestible. Start by just locking your PC, putting more than a four digit passcode on your phone, just adding one extra digit to your passcode on your phone just to keep it from being easily guessed. Move away from swipe mentalities and explain why. So give them some data points that you found from the Ryzen data breach report, from a, a mandate of the, the end trend report or another industry known report helps give them both that you've given them something to digest and then a fact you've given them a source so getting sources gives credibility and sometimes the credibility can be you you can sort you can quote yourself like don't feel uncomfortable quoting yourself if it's industry knowledge you have yep be awesome. selective be selective with quoting yourself but you you are a practitioner or you are a person i tell everyone Everyone can be a mentor and a mentee. Your life values and lessons allow you to bring something to the table in every single conversation. I tell that every time we onboard someone, I don't care if you clean pools for a living, you can add value to our, to our organization. So. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Tyler, any thoughts? So this is a, this hits a little close to home with me. Cause I actually, you know, I've, uh, been doing IT for for a while, but I've been in the cybersecurity field, uh, you know, since last December, and I've uh, actually been in a, a similar spot as you, Terry, um, trying to get my social following up and and get content out there, and um, it definitely, I mean, just this is an aside and not directly answering your question, but consistency is key. The more you do this, like even if it's bad at first like you're you're gonna you're gonna figure out you know what what your writing style is what your audience likes mm -hmm. and that's really what you know propelled me forward more than anything is you just got to keep at it um and you know i ended up going from 200 linkedin followers to 4,000 over that period of time yeah, but awesome. i think at least the technique you know i i always start with information i love to learn and i think to be in this field you got to love to learn because you blink, you don't pay attention. Things have changed. The threat landscape's different. So I, you know, I have certain like sub stacks or newsletters I subscribe to that are aggregates of news and, and cybersecurity and, 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 you know, just that general uh, yeah. topic. And that just gets the creative juices flowing, gives me topics and things where it's like, oh, people yeah. would find that really interesting. And I think in this field, at least, establishing yourself as a subject matter expert. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like the other panelists were saying, you know, getting that that expertise. But generally, so my format for a blog post or, or writing is, you know, it all starts with the headline. Yeah. It's got to be something engaging um, and not not super technical. I mean, exactly. I, yeah. <laughs> you can get into technical stuff. I actually find that's what does the best is getting into the the technical things that otherwise 
people have no clue about. So an example I would use that did really well for me was I went into how, you know, passwords are cracked, you know, hash, you know, brute forcing, all these sorts of things. But I, I, I removed the jargon and, you know, there was a lot of explaining and I, I didn't go too deep into it, but it, it was something that, you know, has that headline grabber, like in, in an infographic showing, you know, how easy it is to crack these passwords yeah. and, you know, how, le- how often they are leaked. And then, you know, I- explaining all these different things in a palatable way that, that people, you know, I, I always seek to teach them something where it's, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. You know, a lot of people have this perception still that it's some 80s movie and it's a hacker <laughs> and they got the green, you know, monitor, you know, I'm in, right? <laughs> and it's and beeping as that. the screen types out. Exactly. <laughs> and we all know that's not the case. So I find that people find, like, they think that's really, it, it's kind of scary, um, but it's yeah. cool when they hear, oh, I didn't know, like, you you could do it that way. Yeah. And, and, you know, distilling that in a way that's palatable, but ideally actionable, too. Because yeah. especially when you're doing something where, you know, it was cybersecurity and, and posting stuff about that, a lot yep. of it's scary. Like, when you hear about these breaches or, you know, oh, your pass, if I just, my post was, you know, your passwords are weak, it needs to be this long and random. Okay, then... You just want to leave them afraid. What do I do? Yeah. Uh, so I, I always try and I would recommend always, you know, have some sort of call to action, some way to, to implement that, make it useful and practical. Yeah. Practicality is really Because people important. are going to engage with, you know, something they get value from. And I, I find that is a really good, like, I guess, strategy and outline to yeah. do that. Um, and finally, you know, I, I know uh, the other panelists said linking to more information uh, I, I, I find that's good. Like if they want to learn more because being brief is a, kind of a must people will tune out. It's the same thing with security awareness training. You can't yep. shove it all in. It needs to be digestible. Yeah. But yeah. The, I have the same thing where it's a, not a physical notepad. It's on my phone or my notes app. And I just write down topics as they come to me because, you know, you never know what's going to be interesting. And I, if it's interesting to me, I figure it's at least interesting to some fraction of the audience. So, cool. That's great. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot, guys, uh, for that. Uh, I'll I'll just add uh, my part of it is I think uh, you you guys all hit it on nail on the head, but I think it's also important to think about it in terms of what is a problem that would re- relate to the people that you're trying to um, get a message across to. If you're going to blog about something, as as Tyler said, it should be relevant to them. Something that you know, they can understand. And if you start with the problem first, you know, this is a problem because we're getting hacked or you're getting your identity stolen or things like that. And those are very simple, non-technical problems you can describe. And you just don't go too deep in the the technology is is what I would recommend. So we're actually at uh, way past the 30 minutes and and we still have probably lots of other other things we could uh, discuss. Um, I did want to, I meant to put this up earlier. I'm going to put up a poll right now. It's got uh, five questions. And if you guys could uh, take a moment just to answer the multiple choice stuff, it'll help us um, just position maybe the next discussion. And uh, as well, I think when you quit this session, there may be a survey that pops up. I hope I configured that just to find out uh, if you have comments on things that we should do more of or less of, et cetera. I tried to fill it out. It said I couldn't. Oh, it said you can't. Okay. Yeah, it well, said hosts and panelists can't because like, oh, the panelists can't. Yeah. Yeah. We're a willing and participatory audience. Right. So oh, man. <laughs> we don't want to skew the results in any one direction. <laughs> I guess that's a good point. Never thought of that. All right. So uh, with that, um, any final thoughts as we go around the, the table? Um, AJ? Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those security awareness is suddenly becoming the new thing, right? Sort of the, you know, 20 years overnight success in the making. Uh, You know, there's a lot of opportunities, both as security practitioners and as kind of recipients of that training uh, to really just continuous learning, right? If an organization at its core has not implemented some kind of continuous learning and improvement from these awareness training mechanisms, you know, they're, they're destined to keep repeating the same mistakes. So whichever side of this you're on, there's learning to be done from all facets. And I think as long as we just lean into that, it's going to go great. Cool. Looking forward to the future for that. And what's your vote? Should we do another one of these in the future if we uh, 
Absolutely. Oh yeah, I think there's an excellent opportunity, and you know, this month in Cybersecurity Awareness Month, yeah, you know, we it's one of those we keep meaning to do this planning, and it can take a while. Even delivering a talk that is yeah. unique and creates a technology demo that takes a considerable amount of time. So yeah. the better that we can do at getting that you know, the, the more robust the, the awareness month becomes. So yeah, I think it's an excellent idea. Cool. Future panelists would probably agree. Awesome. Uh, Fleetus. Press on. I tell people all the time, take it day by day. Um, be prepared though. Um, listen to a good tech talk. Um, the river guide knows what to do when they fall out, not if they fall out. You are going to be susceptible to a breach or to a cyber incident. It's how you respond to that incident. As I alluded to earlier, stop assess and then click or and act or see something say something both from a cyber or physical point of view is any recommendations you can easily push here in your cybersecurity awareness or any comms you have just giving them something that rolls through their head it's to stop, assess and act or just something say something so good stuff and tyler well amen to that fleetus it's not when it's if or <laughs> pardon it's not if it's when <laughs> Um, man, I butchered that, huh? But uh, that's it's the same kind of thing with cyber attacks. And I think, at least in my experience, uh, I prior to this, you know, I don't want to get political, but cyber attacks have been on the rise since a certain invasion, and that's entered, you know, the the social consciousness. So I've I've seen a shift in people from it's it's not going to happen to me to you know okay. It, this is a real possibility. Um, and I, I think barring all the negatives from that situation, that's a good shift in the mindset. And that that's that's a great starting point. And I think for security awareness, I just I think that uh, it's about at fundamentally culture when it comes to results. And that starts with the individuals and it starts with leadership. Um, you know, and not just your your leadership in IT, it starts with leadership on the executive level. So I've seen some where they treat it just like, you know, okay, we just do this thing and I get my metrics for my phishing tests. And it, it's really just that it's a surface level thing. They're not engaged. They don't, they don't care outside of, you know, fulfilling some compliance requirements or, you know, they often think about it in some of these organizations where, Oh, I'm the CEO. I'm not, it's them, the employees, they need to, to get that. And then that's just, it's, it's kind of toxic and it's, it's not optimal for security awareness. It has to be um, this collective, you know, uh, effort. And like I said, that starts in the individual and it's not, shouldn't be a punitive thing um, or, you know, scaring people. I mean, it is scary. It should be about equipping people with the tools and the skills they need to feel confident and, and to spot these things. Amazing. That's great. Um, so yeah, I think I can't say it any better than you guys did. So I'm going to uh, cut it off <laughs> at this point. Uh, it's been a great discussion. I think we'll definitely do this again. Uh, so many more questions, I'm sure. And I think we could probably scare up a few more people uh, the next time uh, as we gain a bit of momentum. So uh, maybe, maybe it will become this month in cybersecurity awareness month, but uh, with a twist with, with any other comments that people want to make. So a uh, good comment from Robert as a wrap up, you made me think about like cyber culture and things that are taught have to be usable at home too. So that's great. Awesome guys. So thanks very much for joining us everybody and we'll see you next time.